I am here in the wonderful city of Las Vegas. Of course, I'm thinking about workplace culture, workplace transformation. And you say, why, Glenn, are you in front of Caesar's Palace? Well, I was watching a documentary and it said that Caesar's Palace basically integrated the strip. We're Rise and Shine leaders. It's time for your morning coffee break. I don't have any beverage today, uh, but I am here with you. And just remember, they say you can't choose your family, but you can't choose your beverage. Uh, leadership matters, so you might as well get good at it. Well, I am here in the wonderful city of Las Vegas. Of course, I'm thinking about workplace culture, workplace transformation. And you say, why, Glenn, are you in front of Caesar's Palace. Well, I was watching a documentary and it said that Caesar's Palace basically integrated the strip. So as we think about racial integration, transformation of this crazy, crazy uh, location, Caesar's Palace was a key player. But did Caesar's Palace really transform the strip? Caesar's Palace, my understanding, was built in 1966. And so there were many steps before that towards integration. And so when you think about organizational transformation, is there one incident that really transforms uh, an organization or, or a city? Or are there many steps towards that organizational transformation? Well, based on what I know about what happened here in Vegas, there were many, many, many tiny steps from many, many different organizations. And sometimes with organizational transformation, that's what happens. There are many, many factors that enter into a successful transformation of, a, <clears throat> of an organization or a rewriting of the rules. And so many, many things have to happen. It's not just one player, it's not just one uh, incident, but it takes all of us working together to really bring about organizational transformation. And so again, Caesar's Palace, 1966 was built they integrated their staffing. Uh, the owner of Caesar's Palace at the time uh, had the showgirls or, you know, waste staff, black, white, integrated that workforce. But years before, uh, there was the Moulin Rouge, which was the first technically integrated casino resort in Vegas. But it didn't last long. It didn't last long. It shut down, uh, and so I think this was in the mid '50s when they when it when it opened, and it only lasted one year, and so the transformation didn't stick, right? But it was an important step toward organizational transformation, or I should say, towards the transformation of the industry here uh, on the the strip. It didn't stick, and so uh, in 1960, so this is six years before uh, what happened with. Caesar's Palace, six years before 1960, uh, the Moulin Rouge Authority, a group of people got together with, with uh, some of the black industry leaders here in, in Vegas, and they came up with uh, the Moulin Rouge agreement that officially ended integration. I mean, officially ended segregation uh, here in Vegas. And so that's interesting, right? So then six years later, uh, for that, those actions to stick, Caesar's Palace, the owner, had to make a decision. And, you know, sometimes we have laws, we have rules, and we put things in place, but they don't stick. And so the big player here, Caesar's Palace, uh, helped to uh, push things forward. And even before that, in the early 50s, you had the Rat Pack. Rat Pack. Sammy Davis Jr. was one of the, uh, you know, premier black performers that came here to Vegas before things were officially integrated so he used his influence other black performers came uh yeah boy it was an interesting documentary i watched on this but just a number of things have, had to happen you had resistance from the um the employee at the employee level uh for some of these things to happen you have um laws that are that are changed you have the civil rights movement the external forces happening you have the internal pressure from employees and then you have an owner who has significant weight a significant authority to start actually implementing th these things in the workplace. So it takes a lot for organizational transformation to, to happen from the top to the bottom. And sometimes these 
there are these external factors that are important for the transformation to stick. And so as you think about these things in your organization, what's going on around you in the outside world that can help or hinder your organization's transformation. That's what you have to think about. It's not just about what's going on in your workplace if you want something to change. What are the external factors that can impact what you are trying to accomplish? Again, here in Vegas, as we think about racial uh, segregation, you know, the climate had to change um, here in order for these things to happen. Then, the people, the labor force, labor, labor has power. Uh, the labor force wanted something different. Some of the high profile performers used their influence to say, hey, we want to move in a different direction. You can't have me coming out here and then I can't do anything else. I have to be segregated, but then you want me to perform uh, in these different venues, these different forums. And so again, so that's part of it. external forces. You have the internal forces from labor, and then eventually a decision maker has to move to change, right? So the owner said, hey, we're gonna embrace this. We're gonna bring in diverse staff. We're gonna bring in folks. And now you have it. Now you have Vegas here today. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting business model. People from all walks of life come here to spend billions um, billions uh, of dollars, uh, but transformation has to happen to for us to fully tap into our potential and so just think about this you know all of those families all the people that come here all of the money that's spent here in, in vegas it took a lot of different things happening to make this a more i would say family friendly environment it's still known as sin, sin city but there's so many families here uh, a lot of things had, had to happen there's people from all over the world here uh, performers from all different kind of backgrounds here uh, coexisting and it's a it's a relatively safe feeling place relatively clean feeling feeling place of course you do have some uh, people here that are unhoused uh, people here uh, you know that aren't benefit from all of this affluence and that's always the case but it's much different from other cities uh, and I'm not gonna mention any cities because I don't want to get in trouble but it's much different from other large cities that uh, aren't as clean on as well kept maybe not even as as, as diverse and and again diversity is uh you have to keep those things in perspective when you start thinking about these things and i know i don't live here in vegas um uh, and i'm sure there are some parts of town that aren't as glamorous as the strip the strip is for a specific purpose but again as we think about organizational transformation we're not trying to change everything we're trying to change some specific things within our organization under our sphere of influence but external factors do make a difference. External factors do make a difference and you have to pay attention attention to them. There are external pressures that you have nothing to do with that you can't control that will impact what's going on inside of your organization and the smart leader will pay attention to it. Pay attention to that. And so uh, thank you all so much for for joining me today on this, uh, this broadcast. A little bit different, a little bit different venue for me uh, than normal, uh, but stay bold. Let's stay inspired and I continue to challenge you. Look around you, look around you, what's going on in uh, your external world that can impact what you're trying to do internal to your organization. Thank you, this is Glenn Guyton and you all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.